audiences will be throwing roses at your feet. <laughs> yeah, and her roses are long overdue. Philip! She glares as Field takes a seat. Looks like I'm right on time to join the party. Uncomfortable, Reed lifts his glass to Field. Yeah. They tried to pull back old light skin eyes art tapestries. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, you still can't trust this dude. This was another great episode. I enjoyed episode seven. And this is going to be my trailer breakdown. Make this thing fun and just see where they're going to go next. A lot of things happen in this episode. I wish we could do a clip by clip analysis, but because of time, because of YouTube and copyright strikes, we're going to have to do it the way we're doing it right here. So let's get into it. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on those notifications so when I drop videos, you get them. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Those of you trying to learn a little bit more about me and you want to send me messages about videos and things I should put on the channel, I'm there on both platforms, Twitter and Instagram. And coming up next week, I'm having a big interview with Just My Opinion Reviews B. Avery to discuss Bel Air, Power, how he got started in YouTube, what it takes to be a black reviewer on YouTube for movies and TV shows. Then the following Wednesday, I've got Mai from Power Book Force. Actress name is Paulina Wynn, and she's very sultry and hot. You know, the TV just didn't do her a lot of justice. This chick is bad. She's coming through to talk to me on that Wednesday. Let's look at one more clip from this episode seven that gave a little bit of the essence of what this show was all about. Some new guests are about to arrive. Enjoy, asshole. LAPD. I'm Lisa Wilkes. Brad Wilkes is my father. Your Chief Wilkes daughter? Carlton eyes Will. Yes. And he wants to speak with you. The officer takes her phone. In the very beginning, we got old Fred Rolling Stone talking to his daughter, and then they're kind of splicing between him talking to his daughter and Will talking to his uncle. And basically, this is the skinny on both. They both running for this district attorney's office. Neither one of them want their kids to become casualties and give up the ghost. So Fred, he just kept it 100% real. He just said, look, I don't want you hanging with the Banks family. Stay away from them until after the campaign. Now, you know what? I want to give him a little bit of credit for at least saying just until after the campaign. But when you tell children to do stuff like that, you know what's going to happen. And on the other hand, Uncle Phil is telling Will not to get close to Lisa because when you get close to someone, you want to be completely honest with them and transparent. And I love that he said that because you absolutely do. But you're telling two high schoolers to stay away from each other. What the hell you think is going to happen? And both men don't want any secrets to get out. And the closer you get with someone, the more you start letting stuff out. And so I was very interested to see how this whole thing was going to happen as they went on throughout this episode. And then we get them actually sneaking with each other. Just like I said, they meeting up in a damn studio at the school. Now, I don't know about y'all. I went to J.H. Rose High School in Greenville, North Carolina. We did not have no damn studio that was empty like this early in the morning. If you wanted to have a makeout session, your ass was behind the bleachers. The kind of money this school must have, and leave me a comment if you had a school that had some kind of a studio where you could just go hang out and get a long time with your sweetie pie. But in here, Will and Lisa are just talking about the way they're hating that they're having to sneak behind each other's back to get some quality time together. But the most important thing Lisa wants to come from them hiding from each other is she wants Carlton to know what's going on before you know, the secret gets to him first or before he has to find out some abrupt manner. And ladies and gentlemen, we knew it was going to go down. We knew he was going to find out a hard way. And I just wish Will would have found a way to talk to him before what happens at the end of this episode. We get that hottie Coco Jones who's playing Hillary. 
she's in the influencer house and she's talking to the fully liberated girl in the room about that sexy, hot ass rendition she did of trying to cook some dessert. And I specifically told y'all last week, the dessert was Hillary. Won't nobody gonna be thinking about her creme brulee. People's gonna be thinking about you burning me one way or the other one. And so she's telling her that, look, Kylie, Kylo, he just posted it and Hillary is mad as fire ants in water. She did not want it posted because he posted it um, without her permission. And she did all these sexy things that she was still debating whether or not she was going to post. Now, at the end of the day, she did record it. You're in this guy's house who's making money off of influencers. And with me being a YouTuber and knowing just the kind of pressure that is put on you to do these videos, you do get caught in a quagmire, people, because even with me on my channel, the, my best videos are the ones that get the most views is when I use profanity, is when I'm just cutting jokes. It hasn't been when I'm giving people stock advice. It hasn't been when I'm giving people real estate advice. It hasn't been when I'm showing people my stock portfolio I built over the years or my real estate portfolio. Nobody wants to see that. People want salacious, salacious sales. And Hillary's friend in here is trying to tell her that sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And by the friend being open and free with her sexuality, that got her a book deal with Oprah. So ladies and gentlemen, sometimes I know we all roll our eyes and we say that you shouldn't be doing the crazy stuff people do to get on social media, but there is some validity to what goes on. And if you really want people to change their behavior, the stuff that makes you bored, the simple stuff, that's what you're going to have to start watching. We get a scene in here where we're going into the relationships. Uncle Phil didn't tell Vivian that he was going to be making a substantial financial contribution to the campaign. And Vivian's like, bro, what the hell? This completely reminds me of the old Fresh Prince of Bel-Air when Daphne Maxwell Reed, who was playing Vivian, got into a huge knockdown drag out with Uncle Phil and said, Somewhere along the way, us became you. And that's when that Uncle Phil was about to become a judge. And here we've got Phil about to become a DA telling Aunt Vivian, look, you know, um, this sacrifice is going to pay off because I can run and get something else higher than a DA. But the problem here is you are a unit. And when you are a unit, whether you got your own account separate or not, when big financial things happen, you are supposed to discuss it with your unit. Back in the day, men would just willy-nilly do whatever they wanted to do just simply because they was the one working, the wife was the homemaker, and they just felt like since I'm making the money, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the shit was wrong then and it's wrong now. When you get married, there is hardly any individualism when it comes to your money. You share almost everything, especially major financial purposes. No, you don't go tell your wife when you go to the store and buy a pack of gum. No, you don't go tell your wife when you go buy new shoes. But when you start talking about you spending hundreds of thousands, that is something you have to share with your partner. And I know Uncle Phil wanted to slap the fire out of his campaign manager for bringing this shit up. But you know what? The truth had to come out. It was going to come out one way or the other one. And Uncle Phil, you should have included her in that decision. We get to the scene where Carlton is on the lacrosse field. And he's not doing too hot, ladies and gentlemen. You know, he's got a lot on his mind. And, you know, he's probably just doesn't have a good headspace right now to be in lacrosse. And he gets to the scene with white privileged Connor where the coach is going to make Carlton go to the scrimmage squad. And white privileged Connor is going to say, looks like lacrosse is still one of those sports they can't steal from us. And I'm looking at him like, bruh, you really want to talk about stealing? You really want to talk about stealing? Uh, did you not steal us from Africa, put us on America, and start making us slaves and stealing the fruits of all our labor? to get y'all's movement started ahead of us? Have you not stolen invention ideas from us in the past? 
you forget about all that? I mean, hell, how would you feel if black people were angry and took the Malcolm X approach versus the Martin Luther King approach and decided that we're never going to be satisfied with your white asses until y'all become slaves and then we can get this financial equilibrium shifted? But no, you know, Carlton didn't say all that. That, was, that, that would have been me. That wasn't Carlton. Carlton gets on the practice squad, hits little buddy, and break his arm, and he took one for Team Black, finally. And after that, he's a little frustrated because he feels like everybody's going to disavow him. Carlton does. Will comes to him and says, look, bro, we can re resurrect this, Carlton. We can get you a jamboree party going on at the crib, and they go on to start inviting people and this is when you kind of start seeing the dynamics that go on between um, different shades of black and different cultures in the black. So Will got all the cool people with the basketball, football, and all that. Carlton's got the chess team, the debate team, the thespian team, and all these teams. And I'm here to tell you people, expose yourself to all that. Just because something seems to be our culture or not does not mean you can't excel at it like Carlton playing lacrosse, black people racing nowadays. Just because something has been deemed, quote unquote, somebody else's culture, don't mean that you might not get involved with it and like it. And then you add our culture or whatever your culture is to it, and that's how you can start bringing people together. And so Carlton went in there and invited his people, and then they got this thing moving. Then back to the thirsty chef. Hillary, yes, 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 you was thirst trapping on this one, sweetie. But you know what? I hate to admit it. I've already gave you my spiel on social media. Thirst sells, ladies and gentlemen. It sells consciously and subconsciously. And Vivian was a little taken aback by it. And she was giving Hillary some great advice. Hillary came running to her daddy. Because daddy is the hero. Daddy saved her. Unlike what goes on in my house with L, my bell, you know, um, when she comes running to me, I give her the Thanos gauntlet. You know, I say, L, life is tough. Get back in there. In this situation, Vivian basically told Hillary the same thing. Instead of letting your daddy rescue you, it's time to rescue yourself, which is what I'm already practicing with my own daughter right now as we speak. And from there, we have a little bit of a squirmish between Phil and Vivian, America's uncle, by the way, Uncle Phil. Vivian has decided she's going to go to an art soiree in San Diego and do her own thing. And I've been to San Diego, and there's a lot of soirees you can get yourself in trouble with. Coronado Island, love it. All kinds of beautiful scenery out there, but that traffic is hell. She's telling Phil, look, I'm going to this art soiree. This is a decision I'm making on my own, just like you keeping secrets from me with the money. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say this, because I'm a man who's been married for well over a decade. You do have breakdowns sometimes in communication, and usually it's because of your career. It's because of the different things you're into. You forget to keep having those meetings with your spouses every day to let them know your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations. Um, what's going on with the finances, how are we going to get through things. And this is a situation of that, my people, because life is busy. It comes at you fast and hard, and then when you add kids to it, it gets even crazier. But you have got to find ways on a weekly and daily basis to let your partner be the center of your earth so that you can keep that line of communication going so that you're not drifting apart. And this is a drift apart period right here, but we're going to follow it as it goes throughout the story. We get my man MI6. Jeffrey got all the intel he needed on old light skin eyes tapestry. And Phil had no idea that light skin eyes tapestry was the man throwing this San Diego modern art fair. And Jeffrey lets him know, look, I know you trust Vivian, but light skin eyes tapestries is the one you need not trust. And I was sitting here thinking to myself, hmm, how is Phil going to handle this considering he's got a busy day of meetings? Well, we saw what happened and we're going to get there. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Vivian made it to San Diego from L.A. pretty fast. And she walks into this soiree and look at this nigga, this light eyes nigga, sitting in here around a bunch of women laughing, kiki keying, 
lollygagging, enjoying these moments. Ain't a man around in this picture. Not a one, just the women. And the minute he sees Vivian, he drops everything to go over there and talk about her art. Sweet, is your sweet good? How is it just lapping it up the way puppies drink water out of the toilet? That's what he's doing. And then we get Will and Carlton having a touchy moment. Will is still kind of being the big brother to Carlton, getting him to try to cheer up for this party he's throwing. And Carlton is on edge about it, man, because, you know, it's, it's out of his element. This is not what he's used to doing. And Will is just encouraging his cousin, letting him know it's going to all be good. And then we pick back up, back up on old Art Tapestry's Deco boy, who has gotten Vivian just a slew of opportunities. She's going to be getting this Neiman Artistic Fellowship. She's going to have to do tours. She's going to have to be traveling with the canvases and all this, that, and the third. Now, keep in mind, people, she's already committed to being the beautiful Michelle Obama on the side of the husband as he's getting this campaign going. He's, she's committed to that. And now your boy is pulling her tugs and her strings to get her to do something else. And so you know my favorite moment was when Uncle Phil stepped up in here and spilt the bean. He cop blocked like hell. Now, I'm not a fan of cop blocking, but this is a situation when cop blocking went right. He cop blocked the hell out this shit, and I loved every minute of it. And Vivian is surprised that he even showed up. And yes, she deserves roses, but one thing that she also deserves is Uncle Phil, you should be getting her roses. So ladies and gentlemen, here's one way I handle my marriage and my relationships with friends and people. I love to tell people, I try to make myself memorable and I try to make myself the type of person that if I go out of your life for a week, you're like, damn, I miss his ass. So I'm always staying in front of the bar by getting my wife flowers, um, candies, cars, shoes, all the little nuanced things, massages before she thinks about it. So, you know, I might do something this week where, I, you know, I'm sending her to a massage. Next week, I'm sending her to get her nails done. I'm staying in front of the ball so that this never happens. That's one way you can practice this behavior so that you never wind up like this. But I was wondering, he's supposed to have been there with the party that's being thrown, and then we get this scene where he left Hillary in charge of it. Now, mind you, this is the same Hillary that when she was in high school, threw a damn party, and got grounded for six months because damn near she about caught the house on fire. So she's in charge of the party, and then Jazz shows up. Now, keep in mind, they got an eye for each other, and he's just here to help her out, have some fun. Supposed to have been helping Will, but, you know, he got his eyes on this hot cocoa chocolate. Cocoa is the right name for this actress because she is the kind of cocoa you want to put in a cup and drink. And then we got a scene where Uncle Phil overplayed his hand, and he let his ego get the best of him. Because the gesture he pulled by coming out here showing Vivian how supportive he is of what she's doing, he had won her back over. You know, this was going to be a makeup moment. But he had to go and say, my penis is bigger than yours, light skin eyes, art deco tapestries, by telling him and Vivian that he's done homework on this dude, and this dude is doing nothing but it seems like exploiting these young artists for whatever gain he wants, and in some cases, Phil is feeling like the sexual gain. Now, your boy, Light Skin Eyes Art Tapestries, lets him know that he only wants Vivian in a professional manner. Nobody's believing that. But at the same time, Uncle Phil, you've made this dude aware that you are aware of him, and he's going to definitely be aware of you. So anytime he's going to try to do anything with Vivian, he's probably going to make sure her ass is on the other side of the coast, far away from you. But what he doesn't know is that you got MI6 on your team and you got Lamont Tyson, me, on your team. So you've got some coverage on both coasts, to be honest with you. But, Phil, you dropped the ball by letting them know that you feel like he's a threat. You feel like Art Deco Tapestries is a threat. And now this could be one of those situations where you could drive him to be even more dastardly, even more dirty, even more sneaky. And this blew it with Vivian. She was not feeling this. And Uncle Phil, you shouldn't have let the cat out of the bag on this one. I mean, she left his ass standing there alone. 
And then we get to this girl, Aisha. I'm liking this chick, man, in here letting Carl to know you've been deemed a sellout. I like that she gave him a look in the mirror, but what's wrong is just because you're a black person and you like race cars or Teslas or airplanes or chess or debate or yachting or golf, that does not take away from your blackness. That doesn't make you a sellout. What makes you a sellout is when you are a black person and you feel that you are above black people. You feel like you've lived a life where you are above them and you talk down on them and you start appeasing the white masses because you feel like they are the superior ones and that's where you reside at. And so you start dissing us. Now, I know as black people, we got our ways. Yes, that can be frustrating. But understand your history and you know why we are where we're at. We're catching up. We've been behind three, four hundred years in the way this society was raised. So I didn't agree with her saying that he's a sellout because of the things he's into. He's a, he has that bit of a sellout because I feel like he's not cultured yet. He hasn't been outside his bubble. And in times he hasn't defended the perspectives of blacks. That's what makes him a sellout. And from there, Carlton is upset with her and left her sitting by herself. And I kind of felt like she would be a good, a good fit for Carlton if they can work this stuff out. And then we get to Jazz and this hot Hillary kicking people out of Dad's office. <laughs> you know, it was all, some other people was in there about to make a baby in Dad's office, leave DNA skeet skeeted all over the couch. And... Hillary comes in there and she says to him, she's like, look, this is definitely not a sexy room to be doing anything. But ladies and gentlemen, I don't care how ugly the room is. What makes it sexy is the people that's involved in the room. And you've got a, a few right here that can make this room as sexy as they want it to be. But it was just ironic to me. You kicking these other people out so that y'all can get ready to have a makeout session. Then we get back to Vivian and Uncle Phil and they're just having a, a hash out session about how Vivian felt like she gave up her hopes and dreams to be at his side, to raise the family, and to kind of help bolster his career. And he's going back with her saying that, look, your art career was failing. You were struggling. You was complaining every single day about it. You was losing money. And I made it so that you could, do, you could not have to do that for money. And ladies and gentlemen, I believe both of them, and there's some truth in it. But at the end of the day, any relationship is going to have sacrifices that have to be made. Those sacrifices do not have to be eternal. Those sacrifices can be put on a timeline, which Vivian makes that point. However, did she make that point 15 years ago? Because she ends this conversation saying to him, she needed him to rescue her 15 years ago. And what does that mean? Does that mean that we about to get divorced? Does that mean that at this point in time, 15 years later, there's no salvaging what I should have done 15 years ago? So, you know, you, you need to continue to have ongoing conversations with your spouse so that you can know how people are feeling. And even if something is very uncomfortable, you need to find a way to speak it to your spouse so that you guys can come to a resolution on it and put things on a better timeline. And then we get to Kylo. Hillary finally done called up with Kylo ass. And she's just basically like, bruh, I need you to take that post down. Now, mind you, she told Jazz to fall back so she can go handle her business. He said, I got your back. And so Kylo is just telling her, look, these people love you. They love what you did. It wasn't like you popped out a titty or anything like that. You didn't show your butt crack, and Hillary's still not comfortable with it until he says, I've got Victoria's Secret looking at you. <laughs> they want you to be cooking some dessert in their outfits, and now you got Hillary's attention. Now, see, ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly what I mean. We get rewarded for foolishness on social media. Not enough eyeballs want to go to the things that need to be positive. And if they do go there, you have to wait like 10 years, and everybody ain't got 10 years to wait for their social media to grow. So Hillary's taking the perspective I've tried to do. You give a little salacious and get your numbers up, then you try to fulfill it with your vision. And at times that doesn't work because people don't want to stick with you 
with your new vision because they came with you when you was doing your old vision. And that's when Jazz steps in and is warning homeboy to pull it down. And he was like, oh, pump your brakes, Jazz. Let me go over here and see what Victoria's Secret is talking about because, hey, I look good in that white and that won't Vicky's Secrets. I can only imagine how good I'll look when Victoria reveals whatever the hell her secrets are to me. Then we get to a touching scene where Will and Lisa make it upstairs. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the essence of house parties in the 90s when I was growing up. These house parties was nothing but designated homes for when virgins would lose their virginity. And that's what's about to happen up here. But along the way, they're just kind of looking at Will's room and understanding how where Will came from. And she's talking about how beautiful his mom is. And this is how the whole thing starts to engage. And we knew what was going to happen. We just need to see how it was going to happen. We get back to Vivian, basically telling Uncle Phil, look, bro, um, I hear you. He explains to her just how when they first met, her work was so engaging and beautiful to him. It just made the whole thing better. And that sounded good, but she still in the end told him, look, I need some space. Go home. You get the hell on, on out of here, which is fine. You know, we do need spaces in relationships. But what she winds up doing next isn't fine. That's not how any counselor would tell you you handled this situation. And then we get a great scene where it looks like Carlton is starting to understand what Will has been trying to tell him about being outside the bubble and blackness. Carlton's friend, who's Asian, invited old white privileged Connor. Maybe I should start calling him Connor Karen because he wants Carlton and white privileged Connor to squash the beef. So Carlton asked Connor to apologize for all the dirty things that he said about black people. And remember, Carlton was complicit in allowing those things to be said. Now, that's where it comes to being a sellout. He was complicit in the homophobia. He was complicit in having jokes about Mexicans, Asians, and black people. That's where it comes to being a sellout. And right now, in this moment, he's taking his blackness back, and he's saying, Connor, apologize. And Connor's like, F you, I'm not apologizing. And all while that's going on, Aisha is in the corner raising her cup up because Carlton is finally standing up for what's right. And Connor tells the crew, let's go. And the crew's like, nah, we good. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if the world was really this simple, where we could get everybody who surrounds these people who think that this type of form of racism is good to isolate them and leave them by themselves, we would eradicate racism in a year. But that's just not the issue. We've got too many places in the world, and I'm talking about America in particular, the flyover countries, where you've got people that live in these racist bubbles. There's no diversity, no forced diversity, no diversity by their own merit, where they just think it's cool to say this bullshit, and it's okay. You know, it's okay for them. And there's, ne there's not going to be an audience to just walk out on them and say, you know what, this is a new day and age is wrong. So I enjoy that they've done this scene, but this scene is highly unrealistic. In places where people are having to be homogenized, it is, but there's still those pockets where folks are just like, the hell with this, I don't care what you say, it ain't happening. But it was a great scene on this TV show. And then we get Will and Lisa, and it's going down. This is right before usually the panty draws come off when you're having that deep discussion about secrets and all those things. And neither one of them is really giving up the ghost. Will never really told her why he's here. He didn't per se lie because this is a better opportunity for him, but he ain't per se give her all the beans of what the truth really is. And for crying out loud, she told him that her real name is Beulah, named after her grandma. And anybody who grew up you know, from 1975 probably to 1990, your grandma had an old ass name like this too. My grandma's name is Kalithia, <laughs> and her grandma's name is Beulah, which is cute, and I'm cool with it. And then she decides, I don't want to go back downstairs. Let's stay in here, and she goes sits on the bed, and this was Will giving a goofy ass face. This kind of look on his face tells me he's a virgin because this looks like the face of a two-pump chump. He about to go over there, and as soon as his penis touch her leg, he going to nut. 
And then from there, the smashing commences, and she says she's ready, and they about to go ahead and get it in. And then the next scene, we get to Hillary coming back, telling Jazz that they have offered her $15,000 a post, ladies and gentlemen. That's why people have to do salacious content, because we can't, we can't encourage society to do what's right or do what would be quote unquote morally right because everybody has a different moral compass. But salacious content is gonna always sell more so than uplifting positive content. And like I said, the only thing you can do is try to position yourself, build yourself up enough where once you get to a position, you have enough followers that wanna follow you for what you would deem as quality content and not salacious. And Jazz is not feeling this. He's feeling like she's selling out, and he's out. But he'll be back. I have a feeling Hillary's going to work this out to the point he's going to come back. And then we get back to my Vivian, who Aunt Vivian. I'm getting close to divorcing from being your TV, having you as my TV wife. Because this is what a counselor would say you don't do when you've had a moment where you're disagreeing with your spouse. You don't go back to someone where it could be a source of the strife, whether he created the strife or not, you don't go back in a late night environment with drinks, so you're already emotionally charged, and then on top of that, dude is possibly gonna be your boss. You should have just waited for the morning when you've had a clear head, there ain't gonna be no alcohol substances involved, because this right here continues to beg and seem as though there might be more going on with you than what meets the eye. And even if it isn't, you can't keep putting a crackhead in a crack house. You can't keep putting someone who's trying to lose weight at the corner line of Krispy Kreme when the donuts come off the line. Because at some point in time, even if you've got the best intentions, you're a human, you're going to break down. So you know he's ready, and he's still saying all the things, oh, light eye, light skin, eyes, art, tapestry, deco. He's still saying all the right things. He's saying, if I need to take a step back, I can, blah, blah, blah. Vivian did show that she's still in her right mind by saying, let's just talk about the Neiman Artistic Fellowship. And I'm hoping that that's where it's going to stay. But this wouldn't be TV drama if that's where it stays, and I don't think it's going to stay there. And then this episode ends on Connor Karen, really being Karen, called the police on this party. I mean, ain't that just some white people shit? That is Karen shit all day. You call the police, they come there wanting to know who's the owner, and these police officers seem like, you know, a black person can't be the owner of the house. Carlton says, I'm the owner. And what does it take for them to go away? Lisa has to come downstairs and say, my daddy is the head of police, He's on the phone. He wants you to go, and that disbanded the police, even though they told the kids you got to go. Now, here's the problem with this, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be something that you know good and damn well Lisa's daddy is going to hold over the head of Uncle Phil and Vivian, too. You're at this party. You got kids drinking who are underage. It's wild sex going on, probably some drugs being done to the point where the police had to be called in. So Connor is a problem, whether we know it or not, because the family is running for an office. And everything you do is under a microscope. Hell, the relationship between Reed and Vivian is under a microscope. And that's what happens when you're running for an office. It is a complete commitment to the family. And you know good and damn well Lisa's daddy is going to use this. Will had it right when he said, Lisa, maybe we shouldn't call your daddy. Maybe you shouldn't go downstairs. But Lisa wanted to help as best she could. And she goes downstairs. She helped, but she also helped Carlton into an eye full of, oh, no, y'all didn't. What the hell y'all been doing up them stairs? And I'm just wondering if all this is going to make things worse between Will and Carlton. And how is this going to play on the campaign hopes and dreams of Uncle Phil? No doubt. Oh, Fred Roland Flintstone is going to use this, and I can't wait to see how this whole thing plays out. But ladies and gentlemen, leave me all your comments. This was another damn good episode, and I'm going to be getting you guys a trailer breakdown for next episode. Remember, if you watched my last one, a lot of things I said was right, it came true. But 
One thing that didn't come true, we still don't know the full history of Art Deco, Light Eyes Tapestry, but hopefully they'll give it to us real soon and we can find out what is going on with this dude. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe, get yourself that life game. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, drop me your comments, and also be sure to come back and check out my interviews. Next week with B. Avery, Just My Opinion Reviews, we're going to talk his YouTube channel, being a social media person, and Bel Air and Power, and then the week after that, I got my, played by Paulina Wynn, who was on Power Book 4-4. She's going to come through, let us know what it was like playing that role, and give us some insight on her career and where she's going next. Till that next sex is hell video, I'll see you.